Um, welcome uh, to you all to our Meet the Mentor evening at North Stowe Secondary College. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at the pictures of the things that we've got um, up to this year um, and you also enjoyed the uh, walkthrough uh, of our uh, new building. And we can't wait to invite you in real life to come and look at it and I'm, I'm sure as soon as we can um, we'll have you in to visit us. Now, Obviously, we can't um, not start this evening by talking about the COVID-19 uh, outbreak because that's had a really big impact on the transition that your children have been able to go through. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, reading the things that we've sent you and enjoyed the little video clips and that the children are, are engaging in the missions that we've sent to you. But we do know that it has created uh, some anxiety. Um, we know that some people are suffering from bereavement and loss during this period or just the loss of the normal freedoms that young people would have at this time of year and particularly with year six finishing school and all of the excitement and the end of year plays and the leavers things that they would normally go through. We do also understand the frustration that you must be feeling at not being able to have a normal transition into secondary school and we also understand that everybody is craving the normality. So we wanted to talk to you tonight about the things that we've got in place, knowing that things have been a bit different this year to what they would usually be. I hope you remember this diagram from when you came to visit us on open evening back in October. Here at North Stowe Secondary College, we put our students' personal well-being and growth ahead of everything, because we know if we get that right and we look after our young people, they will do their very best. And so, over the course of this evening, you'll hear my, myself and my colleagues talk about the things that we've got planned for when your young people join us in September. We're really lucky this year to have children joining us from 19 different primary schools, and I hope that you can see on the PowerPoint slide the logo from your school or your school featured. I did try my best to, to capture all of them. And I know that lots of you will be really nervous. Some of you are coming on your own from your primary school. but. I hope that you're also excited because lots of our children came for different primary schools last year. We had 16 different primary schools last year and within a couple of days you really couldn't tell who'd come from which primary school. It really is that type of school. I'm going to hand you over now to my um, colleague, the assistant head teacher um, leading curriculum, uh, Beth Morris. She's going to talk to you through curriculum and how we're going to handle that as children come back to school in September. Um, hello. At North Stowe, we believe that our students' learning is a journey and it's a journey that we support our students every step of the way. We want all of our students to reach, at the end of their five years, a destination so that they're at a place in their lives where they have the skills, the knowledge and the qualifications they need to go on to the next part of their journey. And we want them, as well, to have acquired along the way some fantastic experiences and memories that will help make them into the young adults that they will be at the point at which they leave school. We believe that there are some really important stages to the journey. And this evening I wanted to make it really clear to you as to what those stages are so that you've got a really good understanding of the roadmap ahead. Okay, so firstly, we believe that um, in order for students to make the most of their learning, they need to be fluent. Fluent in their literacy, their reading and writing skills and their numeracy. And because of that, we invest hugely at North Stowe in terms of time and funding and resource in supporting our students as soon as they arrive to develop and build their fluency so they can access and make the most of the amazing learning opportunities they have ahead of them. Just to give you a flavour of that, you can see um, around the, the bottom left hand corner of the um, screen now some of the uh, strategies, the approaches and the programmes that we use at North Stowe to, to develop students' fluency. For example, we have invested in um, Lexonic, which is an intensive reading programme that all of our students in Year 7 will um, take part in and it has fantastic results in terms of developing their reading age. We use Times Table Rockstars, um, which helps to develop uh, their fluency in Times Tables, which really are the foundation of so much of uh, the learning that they will um, do in maths. We use Accelerated Reader, which supports students um, to track the reading that they're doing. It helps to make recommendations of the type of books um, that will appeal to them. And it also enables us as teachers to be able to monitor how frequently they are reading. 
In our tutor times we have a book club um, and so every week we all take part as a school reading together and taking pleasure in uh, the stories that we, um, we encounter. PrEP, which is our word for homework at Northstow, um, places a huge emphasis on uh, providing opportunities for students to develop their fluency. So all in all, at Northstow, as soon as your student arrives, there will be plenty of opportunities and support available for them to make sure they have the literacy and the numeracy skills to launch into their secondary career. We also want to inspire our students in their learning and we have carefully designed the curriculum to ensure that we tease out those connections to the wider world so that students are all the time making um, links with what they're learning in the classroom and applying it outside. We offer um, a whole host of trips and enrichment opportunities that students will be finding out about in the autumn term. And as well, as parents and students, we will also be sharing in uh, September our learning journey document, which is um, an opportunity for you to have a sense of what it is you're going to be studying over the year ahead. And it really will help to um, make those links and connections between subjects, because we're always wanting to encourage students to see how what they're um, studying connects with their other learning. Now a very important stage of our journey is practice and we believe that students only make progress if they practice. It doesn't happen by magic. If you want to be good at something you've got to work hard at it. And that's why in lessons and for prep we provide students with boundless opportunities to do things, to practice them, to do them again. We're really clear with students about what it is that they need to do in order to get better and most importantly, how they go about doing that. We do lots of little quizzes, we provide opportunities and lessons for students to take on board the feedback that they've had from their students and go back to their work and to revise it. And I don't know if you were able to see, but in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little illustration there of Norstow's philosophy about practice and progress. And that is, we don't believe that progress is a linear line. In fact, we think it's a really messy squiggle. And we absolutely support students along the way to make mistakes, to go back, to have a dip, and then we ensure that they get back on track going forward. And finally, the part of the journey that we want all of our students to experience is that of success and of achievement. And we like to celebrate their successes inside and outside of the classroom and ensure that they know how proud we are of them, of how hard they're working and how that's paying off. We celebrate our students, we don't give hollow praise, we're really clear about what it is that we value. Kindness, curiosity and hard work. We let our students know when they've done well and we also communicate with you as parents to let you know when your students are doing something to be proud of. It might be an e-postcard e that we send home from our subject teachers or it might be from tutors, uh, an email home or um, a phone call home. We have a newsletter that's sent out each week. All of these are ways of letting you know of the hard work that your students are doing at school and how it's paying off. Now, as parents, we are, of course, all really worried about the impact that the months of school closure has had on our students' learning. And I suppose I wanted to say to you tonight, it's going to be okay. This is a five-year journey, and we've got time on our side. And what is so special about our curriculum at Northstow is that it's not a rigid curriculum, it is a responsive curriculum. And when we meet the students in Year 7, and we're able to have time to work out what it is that we need to be working on to get them on track, we will adapt our curriculum and we're already putting measures in place to ensure that in the um, early months when they come back there is lots of emphasis on ensuring that students are back into those learning routines. Lots of opportunities for them to uh, retrieve their knowledge from primary school and to ensure that they're clear about how that links and feeds directly into what it is that we're going to be doing with them at Northstone. Now I just wanted to talk very briefly with you um, about PrEP, which as Mrs Moss I think referred to, is our word for homework. PrEP complements our Key Stage 3 curriculum and it gives our students opportunities to 
prepare for lessons by improving their literacy and numeracy skills, to revise the skills and knowledge that they've learned to help it stick in their memory, to extend their knowledge about the subjects they study and to make connections with the world that they live in, and to play and take pleasure through pursuing their interests in hobbies and extracurricular activities. Now, Prep is set via Show My Homework, which is the app that we use um, at Norstow to help students make sure that they can manage what they're doing and also will allow you as um, parents to be able to monitor it and see um, that students are meeting the, um, the deadlines. We also run a, pre a prep club most nights at school and this provides a real uh, quiet place for students to study in and to get further support. We have set for our students um, an expectation that they spend approximately an hour of a weeknight doing prep and you will have chance, I know, when you come to replay uh, the slides to look at it more closely, but you can see the diagram there shows how we split that time up. And it's basically made up of some core activities which we expect students to do every night, be that some reading, some times tables, quizzing, um, some quizzing on vocab, plus 20 minutes um, every evening where one of our subjects will have set a prep activity that will involve them to uh, work further on it. And then finally, um, in terms of um, over the summer, really what we're just wanting you to do is to make the most of your summer holidays, as Mrs Moss referred to earlier, in making sure that you have got um, a healthy and positive um, mind frame and that you are ready to come and start your adventure with us in September. If there is opportunity for you to carry on with some of the tasks we've set you in the mission pack, that would be brilliant. Um, lots of regular reading or listening to audio books or maybe doing some uh, quizzing, that would be fantastic. But ladies and gentlemen, students, we are so looking forward to meeting you and to starting this amazing learning journey with you in September. Um, I'm going to introduce you now to uh, Mr Russell, um, who is my other assistant head who leads on Ethos, uh, who's going to talk to you uh, very much about uh, what we're doing to support uh, young people uh, as they join and, and work their way through their years with us. Thank you. I'm Mr Russell and I'm here to talk about Norstow's mental health and wellbeing offer. We're really proud of this strong offer and, we're, and I'm really looking forward to engaging with, it, with this this evening. Um, as you can see on your, your PowerPoint in front of you, you will notice that there is a, a slide there that demonstrates the number of hours that students receive over their curriculum time. For um, Norstow, we, we offer a How to Thrive programme that is one hour in, in length over the course of each week. It is a fully designed curriculum that teaches students skills to develop their resilience, to enable them to deal with life challenges and to thrive. And I'm just going to give you an example of that. So we will teach them something called the ABCs. So I will mention about the A, which is an activating event. And actually, this is an activating event for me now, standing in front of the camera. I, I will be thinking many things, and they will be known as my beliefs. And some of those will be, actually, am I wearing the right suit? Is my hair all right with a lockdown haircut? And I'll be thinking these, and there'll be some positive things that I'll be thinking that I'm really looking forward to meeting you in September when, when we, we get back to reality. Um, and I'll be having those thoughts, and I want to really try and enable me to look at the very positive thoughts. So if, if I'm thinking very negative thoughts, I might get very nervous, very concerned, and actually I might not make sense in what I'm saying. And that will be a consequence to those beliefs. So the second offer is our mental health wave, and that's to allow students to get the correct support when they need it. So for example, wave one is when a student has got a low anxiety or mood, all the way to wave four, which is a significant increase in terms of the concerns that they may be having regarding mental health. Now, wave one is very much focused on the tutor first quality tutoring and teaching. Wave two is when we are looking at it across a house perspective. Wave three is what we call the nest, which is a referral system that our teachers, um, our parents may utilize to ensure we get the right support for the student. And wave four is when we work with external services. I'm going to explain the, the unique intervention strategies for wave one and wave two in more detail.
So wave one, first of all, we've, we've got an excellent resource of 10 books that are centered in our library, and they're all to do with mental health and, and well-being and support for the students. The beauty about these books is that, yes, they're available in the library, but we also have got an audio file. So if, for example, if two students were wanting to take out the same book, they will still have the same access to that material. We will also learn about coping strategies and how to thrive. And there are five key coping strategies that we will work with. One, relaxation activities. Two, thinking about something good. So for example, we might take them back to a holiday that they've been on where they're really looking at the positive thought and imagery in their mind. Three, leaving a situation. Now that isn't always possible in all times, but it is a strategy that can work. Also, we recommend that students talk to one another or if they need to, they talk to a support staff or another teacher in the school or a parent at home where they can really work through a solution together. And finally, mental games, where we try and shift the focus of what's making them nervous or have anxiety at that time. We try and shift that focus to ensure that they um, think about something positive. Okay, wave two, we're looking at um, two offers, one that are unique to Norstow, one is colouring for mindfulness, and the second one is our first aid mental health support that an, another colleague has currently been trained to deliver ready for September. If there is significant more need, then we would talk about the NEST, which is our referral system, and we've got two really good offers for you in September. One, there's the YMCA counselling, where students will receive six hours of counselling time over a set period where they will really look and focus on a need and try and develop strategies to make that more positive. And secondly, we also have the equine and dog therapists that will be coming in on half a day a week. So there are really a range of things that students can receive at the school. And we're, as I said previously, we're very proud of those and we really want to support the best out of the students. And this was set up regardless of the pandemic that we've been in. We felt that they were absolutely essential to a student coming to Norstow to have that extra support and guidance. Great. So hopefully you can see from uh, my two colleagues that um, there's a great deal of support um, for students coming up to, to close any gaps that might have emerged uh, during the kind of lockdown period that we've been in. Um, but also to make sure that generally that we look after young people's well-being because we really believe that if you get that right early on then you're going to build really solid foundations to cope with the additional stresses as they grow older and enter that exam period. So really I hope you feel that we are very supportive here and we do take our role as supporters of, of families very very seriously. We've got lots of um, signposting and uh, advice and guidance that we, that we offer to people and we really feel it's important to talk to each other. That relationship between family and home is crucial. We always say to you, if you're worried, talk to us. If there's something that you're, you feel we're not getting right, talk to us because equally we'll do the same with you. And if we've got those good open dialogues and hopefully if you've talked to any current parents that are with us and with our current year sevens, you'll hear that we take that really seriously. We will, however, be doing some, some assessments. Uh, students here coming up from Year 6 won't have done their SATs. We would always do CATS testing, um, which are a series of tests that you can't revise for. They're looking at uh, children's innate ability across four uh, strands. And then we do something called GL assessments, uh, which look at um, progress in English, maths and science. And they'll do those in the early weeks with us, um, so that it gives us also an understanding of where they are and where the gaps are, so that we can make sure that we do fill them. Because we do want to challenge children. It's, we talk very much about supporting and looking after the well-being of young people, but we push them. All right? We do expect our children to do their prep, we do expect children to engage with the reading and the numeracy because we know that they're key um, aspects that will allow them to be successful at GCSE and on to A-level if they stay with us in the sixth form. Um, and we will push them um, because we think that with that can-do attitude and that have a go and it doesn't matter if I get it wrong, I'll practice and I'll get better, is what makes our children uh, at Northstow the, the very best and most successful they're going to be. So we put this slide up and this is a slide that I use regularly with my staff when we're doing training. The limit is not in the sky, the limit's in the mind and you might remember that I put it up when you came to see us in uh, October. Um, because I believe wholeheartedly in the power of young people. And I think if we put ceilings on young people too early, then we're doing them a disservice. 
because we genuinely believe that children can achieve anything they set their mind to. And yes, some of them might need more support, and some of them might need guiding and, and uh, you know, uh, looking after during that period. But actually, if we take off that limit, if we take off that ceiling, then our children really can do anything. And so when I recruit as staff, that's really important to me when I'm looking at, at who I'm recruiting into positions. Um, as well as the fact that they understand that our values of kindness, curiosity and hard working are not add-ons. They're not something that um, you know, we've, we've, we've selected and, and we, we reference occasionally. They're things that run through our curriculum, through um, our, our reward system and run through all of our recruiting process. So we do expect our staff to treat each other this way and to treat our children uh, with those values too. So you'll see on the slide then uh, key staff, so you've got um, me and uh, Mr. Russell and uh, Ms. Morris who you've seen there. Um, and then to the right hand side you've got um, IPA who some of you will have had contact with, uh, Laura Johnson. And I'm then just going to introduce you to the rest of our staff because we are a family here and we do talk to you about the fact that you will be joining the North Stowe family. Um, and we, we don't say that um, you know, arrogantly or even shyly, we think that that is crucial to why our children are doing so well here, that they are and do feel that they're part of our North Stowe family. So on the other side of the slide then, on the right hand side, you see Carrie, who, um, who leads our provision for food and lunch times uh, and break time provision. You've got Mr Cole, who's our site manager, who the children will see uh, at the gate and welcoming in with his happy Monday and happy Tuesdays. Um, you've got uh, Mrs Cook, who I'll show you again on the slide later. She's our student support assistant. We currently have only one student support assistant. She oversees the children across all of the houses. Mrs King's in the middle at the bottom and you'll see her on reception if you come and visit the school. And lastly, uh, Harriet Wright, who um, you will sometimes see on reception, but will be undertaking our data and reporting um, role, as well as uh, working with children in the library. So you can see on the uh, slide then, the um, curriculum model that uh, children will uh, follow this year. So a real nice range of subjects that they'll, they'll get to uh, enjoy. And you can see the staff then uh, on this board. So there's Miss Matthews, who'll be uh, leading in English, and she'll be joining Miss Morris, who's been teaching English brilliantly this year. Um, you've got uh, Miss Seaborn, who's teaching uh, modern foreign languages, uh, joining us across from Swavesey. She'll be with us full time. Um, Miss Long, uh, teaching science. Um, Miss um, Stevens, who uh, has been our maths teacher this year, but is going on maternity leave. Um, so we'll be having uh, Miss Burke and Mr. Jarrah, who will be joining us, and Miss Burke will be staying with us um, through uh, the next few years. Um, Mr. Robinson joins us to teach PE. Miss Tolley, who I think has got the very best picture out of all of us with the gorilla in the background, is joining us to teach geography. Um, Miss Morgan, um, teaching history. Mr Ling, who joins us new to teach uh, design and technology. Um, Miss Bruin has been with us this year, uh, teaching um, music, dance and drama. Miss Frith is coming to join us to teach art. Uh, myself will be doing a bit of ethics and Mr Russell, who you've already met, doing the How to Thrive programme. Now the student support network then is the next life and it's just so that you know those people that, that children really can go to as their first point of call once they've, you know, if they can't find their tutor or, or you need to talk to somebody. So you can see at uh, the top um, of our slide, we've got Miss Leatherby and she is our Senko and she will be in school one day a week but she works her other four days at Martin Baker Academy so he's always very near if we need anything. Then there's Georgia Whitbread, who's our uh, level three caseworker, so she leads out on EHCP reviews, does a small group work. Miss Coltman, um, who uh, leads on our um, LEAP, Flexonic LEAP program, uh, doing some small group work, but he's mostly in classrooms. My two blank pictures there are my um, people who are joining us, uh, literally recruited last week, Mr. Wright and Miss Woodward, uh, who join us as um, TAs, who will be um, classroom based. Then there's Roshan Buick, who is our science technician, so the children will see her in and out of science labs, getting experiments and things ready for them to, to do in, in class. And then Miss Cook again, who is always based in the house office, so really is a really good point of uh, contact for children. So I've put on the screen there um, some uh, just some highlights of what our clubs and enrichment offer will be next year. Now we, we put together our clubs um, list uh, in the September training days and we look at what staff will be offering. There's usually uh, three or four things on every evening, a variety of clubs uh, and a variety of activities for students to get involved with. Last year I did put up the trips that we were getting involved in and you'll obviously know that we are a bit uncertain about what September onwards will look like. So. Our usual trips are we go off to Warwick Castle, we go to the uh, Leicester um, Space Museum and we go off um, with, on the day trip to France. 
we'll update you more on that as we um, go into the, the new academic year and we get a better idea about what we're able to do and not do. But certainly there's lots of enrichment and opportunities for children to get involved with things. So my last slide then just really kind of brings this to a close to really try and um, emphasise the important relationship that we have in schools with you as families. We have three houses currently um, at North Stowe. We have um, Glenny, Attenborough and Dyson House. Now they will grow over time. Um, we will have an additional house uh, added on and children go into tutor groups um, and at the minute there are three forms per house. As you'll know, those of you that have got children at other CMAT schools or know of us, the CMAT school view on tutoring is that we use vertical tutoring and we believe wholeheartedly in that because the older children are such a great influence on helping and mentoring younger children uh, going through. It also allows tutors to have just a small group of each year group and really focus down on their needs. So when our children are older and they're going into work experience, it allows tutors to work with them. When they're going into year 11, that real support that they'll need as they're going through their GCSE exams. So it is really important that we follow that vertical tutoring process, but obviously that's quite tricky when you're doing this a year at a time. So our year sevens were in tutor groups this year and we've had a bit of a shuffle and move around to get ready to take your uh, young people in um, as they join and, and our current year seven go up to year eight. So there will be a little bit of movement over time um, as we add to houses and as we add more staff to the school. But essentially your tutor, whoever they are, will be the most important person uh, to your child. They should know them inside out and you should be able to contact them as your first port of call about anything that you are worried about. They meet with children um, quite regularly in terms of mentoring sessions so that they really get to know them and crucially that relationship between the tutor, parents and the child really makes that difference and so I just want to emphasise before I finish and, and show you the tutor groups when we start that next session that um, we do want you to keep in touch, do connect with us, do talk to us. If there's anything you're worried about, please do tell us. Don't let it linger and then get to a stage where you get very frustrated or, or upset about it. Please do talk to us. Equally, when you're pleased with the things we do, it's always nice if you could tell us that too. So I'm going to hand you over, I'm going to finish here because we're going to look at our tutor session next. So Mr Ross is going to take you through the session that normally your tutor would run through, but technology and, and such like, it's easier for us if we do that centrally. And then um, you'll go off to meet your uh, new tutors and the chance to see who else is in, in your house, other children, other families. And of course, if you've got any other questions, please do get in touch. Okay, welcome back. Um, now we have a really strong commitment to know, value and support every student to achieve and we see tutoring as an absolute essential part of this process. So we're going to go through now all the key aspects of tutoring, that look, what it looks like on a day to day basis. So this first slide, on the left hand side you'll see the three houses, so in the orange we've got the Glenny house, in the red we've got the Dyson house and in the green we've got the Attenborough house but it doesn't matter what house you're in because actually in the what we do value is the students and they are the central part to this process so you'll notice on the right hand side of the PowerPoint the, the student is amongst all the different um, aspects that we will look at over the course of the year now we relate back to our values and I, and I do feel that that's absolutely important. So we want students that are kind, that they care about each other, the community and the wider world. We want students that are curious, we want to find out more and are open-minded to find creative solutions. And we want students that are hardworking, practice, keep going when things are challenging. And therefore, the ethos that we've developed so far at North Stone is that it's simple, it's clear and it's coherent. There is a real can-do attitude in the students in year seven, and we would like that to continue next year. We would also like this fa the family feel, and, and that's been mentioned several times this evening, there is an absolute family feel. And the students do know those values that I've mentioned. At a curriculum review last year, we asked every student, and they would all wholeheartedly say what the three values were, and how that they've been the focus of many assemblies. So we will be developing an inclusive environment. We'll have new opportunities and there'll be a, a str strong imagination from those students. We will also be looking at students 
as part of a B North Stone. And you'll notice that the emblem of the B North Stone poster that you see is in blue, and that's because it spans across the full learning community. I'm just going to pick some of those key aspects out of that B North Stone poster. So look at the very first one. Names are important. Use them, know them. The other aspect is about being tidy and smart. That shirts are tucked in, ties are straight. There are high, high, high expectations of the uniform. So on the very first day, when you're all in your fresh new uniform, that maintains for the full time that you're here at North Stone. Now, the shape of the day is, is slightly different here to other local schools. We encourage students to come in in the morning to, com to, to, to come through to the canteen and they will assemble there for a social time, but they won't go straight into a tutor time, they will go straight into the period one lesson at 8.50. Our tutor time is at 10.50 and actually we really value that time and there is a strong structure to it. So on a Monday morning, we have a Monday, uh, an assembly, a whole school assembly. On a Tuesday and a Thursday, we look at the Powerful Words Challenge and the book club that Miss Morris has already mentioned to you this evening. And secondly, we also look on a Wednesday as the Over to You. And that is where we encourage students to be leaders within um, that session to set up their own, um, their own activities. So for example, one of the my fondest memories last year is when a student did a, a cake decorating contest. We also look at the pledges and the 99 things, which I'll talk about later, and the uniform careers. And on a Friday, we have the very competitive inter-house and inter-form challenges that go on throughout the year. So the next slide is all about attendance, and we value that as being one of the most important aspects of, of our tutoring because actually any days missed of school are learning lost. So therefore we want to ensure that we have students in the green group, which is 96 to 100% of, of, of attending. And that's why it's slightly wider of the cone that's within that. Mrs. Morris has always already mentioned about prep this evening, where we, we, we're looking at preparation, revision, extension and play. And that is our name for homework. We will monitor that and we will check that within our tutor times to ensure that students are on track or if they've got any questions or queries that we can direct them to the, re the correct place. We will also be celebrating students' achievements. And again, they are simple, clear and coherent. The four areas that we really look at within a classroom is verbal praise, house points, postcards and positive communication. House points haven't been mentioned this evening, but they are for students that have achieved in the inter-house or the inter-form activities and are, are given across by the, the form tutor. There are other things that are unique to North Stone, such as Hot Chocolate Friday. So every week, Mrs Moss will select two students that have demonstrated our values exceptionally well, and she will sit down and have a hot chocolate with them just to value, that, um, value their successes and their achievements. We will also look very carefully at any sanctions. I don't want to spend too long on the sanctions, I just want to just highlight a couple of key things. So if students are late to lessons, or, or they, they're using inappropriate language, then they would be placed into a, a lunchtime detention. If they haven't completed prep, then that would be the teacher that would be responsible for those students, and they would work with them either at lunchtime or after school to ensure they're, they're at the right place amongst the rest of the class. And then if there's a more serious concern, then they would place in the college detention on a Friday. We can hold students back for 10 minutes after school uh, if we want to have a, a clear conversation about a uh, piece of work or the behaviour within lessons. And we will ensure that, you know, that those conversations happen before they leave for the day. As we've mentioned, tutoring is absolutely the heart of the process and we value the academic monitoring and, and mentoring as, as part of that. So students will receive two reports in year seven and after the reports they will sit down with their tutors and they will have a look at what's been going really well and areas that they need to improve. Once that's happened, we will set three targets for those students and they will be fed back to parents 
either in a phone call or an email home. So we make sure that this is a three-way process between parents, students and the tutor themselves. Student leadership is one area where we're working on ensuring that every student is known and valued. And there's four key areas that we've been looking at. One, student ambassador, where one student is trained within each class to be the representative of that class. So we had a visitor come in, they were about to have conversations about what the work they'll be doing and, and what they've been looking at over the course of the term. So we'll also have anti-bullying ambassadors to ensure that students are bullied here at North Stoke. And we'll also have student receptionists for students to welcome visitors into the college uh, and show pride in their school. And finally, we'll have activity leaders that will set up activities for students, whether that's break, lunch times, or after school. Now over to the, the pledges. Just mentioned about leadership, and that forms one part of our pledges. There are seven criteria. It is participation, leadership, excellence, diversity, giving, environment, and service. And those pledges are based kind of like the Duke of Edinburgh Awards scheme, where you receive a bronze, silver, and gold pledge. The bronze pledge is what students will be aiming for to begin with. So I'll give an example of that with participation, that they should be attending an after-school club to receive this for a minimum of six weeks. So when they come in the first term and they would like to go to a table tennis club, that would then ensure that they would get the bronze pledge within that. And they will work through those over the course of the lifetime that are in this school to ensure that they can progress to that gold standard. We will also be looking at the 99 things. And there's a screenshot of those 99 things available to you at home. You can read through them and many of those you'll see that you, you have done um, throughout the course of their life already. What well, well, we're trying to guarantee that will happen here at Norstow before they're 12 and 3 quarters. So let's look beyond the classroom. So we've talked about pledges, we've talked about 99 things, but we also want Norstow to be the absolute hub of the community. We want students to have a strong community focus and we would like all students to get involved in as much as they can. So that could be extracurricular clubs and, and trips, but we're also saying that their responsibility doesn't always stop there. So when students are walking or cycling to school, we want to demonstrate that students are part of this community and care for that and therefore their behaviour and the way that they act to and from school is an essential part of that. We will work with students through a restorative approach. There will be standard questions, and you will see that on the back of um, teachers' lanyards. And those questions will identify if a student has gone into difficulty within a lesson or outside of a lesson. We will work through set questions to allow them to have a, a real considered view of why they might have acted and how they would go about repairing those actions. So you'll see the key restorative questions that will be on those lanyards on your screen. And they take students through to form a conclusion about taking responsibility for the actions that they've, they've completed. So if students need further help, then we've already highlighted this evening that we've got a student support assistant who will be based in the centre of the school in one of the house offices. And she is that go-to between um, tutor, parent and student when there's a need. You as parents will also have an opportunity to speak with Mrs Cook if you have any concerns. So that might be that you, you've got an appointment booked or it might be that you're late, running late to a, a school day because the car's having difficulty. And that, that ongoing conversations will allow that really effective communication within our school. Finally this evening, keeping up to date with your, what your children are doing online can often seem a daunting task. Technology is constantly advancing, however there is a need for you to stay in control and safeguard your child. Our children are often digital experts and we are digital novices, 
So we just want to ensure that we, de we develop our skills to safeguard those children through cyberbullying, online grooming, inappropriate content, online pornography and online reputation. So our advice is to you, have free and frank discussions with your students. Manage the devices, put yourself in control, stay safe on the move. So when we're looking at mobile phones, that if they're not in your sight, that you know that they are safe for the students at any point in terms of the material they're accessing. Have an agreement. Students, dis have discussions with the students about social networks early. Keep private information private and check the age rating of those particular material. So if, if there's any of those aspects that you can't answer yes to, that you're in control of, then we recommend over the summer period to ensure that that's the case. So when students return back to the college, that you feel confident about the material that they've been accessing. Thank you very much for listening tonight. I know that you were checking you through quite a, uh, quite a lot of information. The presentations will be available uh, online in due course and we'll let you have that link. Um, and now is the time for you to, to say goodbye on this call and then you should then have the link to be able to join and meet your tutor. Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs>